Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In today's video, we are going to build an Streamlit application you know, for predicting the insurance charges. So we will utilize a low code machine learning library called PyCaret. You can see I am on the PyCaret documentation website. So you can find it here, it says an open source low code machine learning library in Python. PyCaret has been uh, very famous lately because they kind of provide you these low code functionalities. They have uh, several classes that they have created and you just use those classes to train, uh, train a machine learning model. Okay. And it works uh, out of the box. It supports cloud services as well like AWS for example. So we are going to use this library today, PyCaret. We'll, uh, we'll also use the data, we'll load the data uh, using PyCaret get data function. And then, uh, then we'll create a regression model to predict the insurance charges. Okay, and uh, then we'll train the model, we'll save that model, and then we'll use that model in an streamlit application to predict the insurance charges. So you can see this is the documentation that they have installation. Okay, it's it's a little difficult uh, to install PyCaret uh, on Windows. Okay and sometimes on Linux machines as well because uh, till now the PyCaret was not updated or upgraded to you know install in Python 3.10 plus version. Okay. They have recently launched PyCaret 3.0 and now we will, we will use this in this video today. So let's see, I am on my Google Colab. I will use Colab to you know use this PyCaret library to train the model and then we will create the stimulate application once we have that model ready. So let's first install it. So pip install and you have to give this p. Okay, they still haven't uh, fully released. I, I think it's still testing it out. You can see it says pycaret 3.org is now available. Pip install hyphen hyphen pre pycaret to try it. So let's try that. So pre pycaret. It will install. It will take real time to install uh, this uh, particular library that we have. And once we install it, we will, you know, use the get data function in PyCaret. They have a lot of uh, data available. You know, you, you can just load it using their uh, uh, functions, and you know, you can train the model. You do not have to load it from outside if you do not have any data available. Once it is installed, we have to restart the runtime. We'll get some uh, warnings when the installation is complete. So let me meanwhile import the other libraries. So we will need pandas to load the data, data frame. We also need numpy. So import numpy as np and excuse me. And then we need matplotlib. So matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. We also need, uh, let's also do one thing. Import matplotlib, matplot, uh, excuse me, matplotlib as npl. And then what we need, we also need Cborn. So import Cborn as SNS. We'll try to create some kind of data visualization to find out the correlations between the, uh, the, the features that we'll have. Import Cborn as SNS. Now what we can do, we can, let's first restart the runtime. So I have to restart the runtime. You can see it's restarting here. Meanwhile, let me just import from PyCaret dot uh, data set import get data import get data excuse me and then we also need the regression so what i'm going to do i'm going to do pi caret dot regression and i will import all the modules inside that regression uh, class that we have so reg regression uh, import just do this asterisk okay so the star that we have so what this will do, this will basically will import every function that we have inside this regression class. Okay, like you know load model or train or setup, all that we need. You know, we'll we'll talk about it once we are you know uh, initializing the PyCaret environment. Okay. So from PyCaret dot regression import. So today we are going to you know use a regression model. Okay. 
but PyCaret has the capability, you know, to work with other kind of data and other tasks that we perform, like classifications, time series forecasting, anomalies detection. They also provide uh, text classification, sentiment analytics. You know, you can go, to, uh, you can go to their documentation, and you can find out all their examples. If you come to examples, you see right, they have classification tasks, they have regression tasks. You know, based on your text similarity, so they have text data as well. They have numerical imbalance data, they have diabetes data, this PMI Indian data set and they also have other kind of data that you know you can just go and try it out. Uh, it, it helps you you know build models faster okay and they have a lot of functions where you can fine tune your model, you can evaluate and you can also direct, directly deploy on cloud services like AWS. They also provide this out of the box. Okay, So from pycare.regression import asterisk and now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set uh, some parameter here just to get the visualization so rc params dpi figure out dpi okay so the import has been uh, successful now what we are going to do let's load the data so i'm going to say data equals get data and here I will just pass this string which is insulin. So I just need this data. So you can see we once we have loaded the data successfully using get data, you can find out there are around uh, six features and one target. Charges is our target column. Okay, it's an it's a health insurance data. Okay, so basically uh, they have some charges based on these features like what the age and sex, BMI, children, smoker, okay, and the region as well, okay, southwest, northwest, and all those regions that we'll try to see. Okay, so let's first see data.info to get basic details about the data to find out categorical or missing values and numerical uh, columns. You can see we have total of seven columns and there's no null, null values available, data is complete and you can see we have three categorical column object 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 smoker region and sex bmi is a numerical value okay uh, it's a uh, basal metabolic index uh, kind of where we try to uh, correlate with obesity and other uh, disorders or parameters that we have right that's how we uh, uh, find out that approximate value okay so bmi is like based on the uh, age and heights and weight and all those things so we have the six which is of course an object now let's do one thing let's first find out what is the uh, how many classes are there in the region how many categories sorry how many categories are there in the region so what I'm going to do let a region dot value count so you can see we have four uh, categories in the region which is the southeast southwest northwest northeast quite balanced they have around very balanced uh, among each other. We have around 320 plus uh, values, the rows uh, for all these four classes. Okay. Then we have BMI. Then we have you know children and children is again a int. Okay. Uh, smoker yes or no? Now let's see if about smoker as well. We have smoker dot value count. So we have two. Okay. You can see uh, only 274 uh, people among like among all this uh, we have 13,000 right uh, here uh, rows. Okay. So we have around 274 people who kind of are uh, smokers. Okay. And what I feel is the charges should be more for them. We will try to find out the feature importance with the help of PyCaret. We will also like to see once we train the model what are the, what are all the features that impacts the, impacts the model. Okay. Then we will see. So. Now what we can do, okay, how we have this data, now we have to first, this is our target column which is charges, we have to predict these values based on this feature, that column that we have, okay. So now let's do one thing, let's first visualize this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to call it, let's call it numeric. Let's first try to uh, visualize and find out the correlations uh, between the data that we have. So age bmi and charges smoker 
we'll do sns dot we'll do a pair plot sns dot pair plot data and here i what i'm going to do now i'm going to pass numeric the column that i have set above numeric and that who will be our smoking so we'll do a hue mapping on smoking that's it so it's not be smoking it will be smoker because our column name is smoker smoker and then we'll just uh, do the plot so plt dot so we just highlight the differences between you know smokers and non smokers here you can you can also see right age is correlated with charges you can see it over here we have age and we have charges and people get higher charges you know as they grow older that's how the uh, insurance premiums are also being calculated right and also is smoking is a uh, big impact here okay so if you are a smoker despite of your age you know the charges will be more if you see this right so now what we are going to do we are going to initialize initialize the pie carrot environment okay so initialize the pie carrot environment and we are going to first set up the uh, uh, pie carrot where we have to like we use scikit learn to basically uh, do the train test split we kind of create this x train y train and x test y test similarly we will also have a setup option here so what i'm going to do i'm going to have a variable and call it setup and this setup is coming from this this module that we have imported if you see this pie carrot dot regression import asterisk this is what we are doing so we are using one of the function of that class setup and here we will set up our uh, model environment okay, that we are going to train so first thing is data so our data is nothing but the data that we have the data variable you see this data that we have uh, where we have the data frame right we have loaded that the insurance data so data equals to data and the next is target our target is nothing but the charges so we have this charges as a target and then we have excuse me then we have train uh, then we have train size so let's keep it let's keep it 0.8 as target at train size we will have 80% and 20% as train and test train size and then we'll have couple of things we can also have a session id by default also if you don't give any session id or you can also give a session id session id so i don't want this session to be lost i am giving a session id here and then what we can do we can have normalize equal to true okay so we are trying to you know do this pre processing on top of that data where we want that data to be normalized okay normalized equal to true there are different way of you know normalizing data i think pi caret u g score will calculate by that way we'll see once we are getting the output of it you have min max scalar you have lot of other things that way you can you know normalize your uh, data for regression task okay so here we are going to train a regression model okay, we have to calculate we have to predict a numeric value right so uh, we'll use a regression model we'll see which model is giving us the best result with the help of uh, compare models that we have in pi caret so here we have data equals to data then we have target equal to charges and train size equal to 0.8 we have a session id normalized now let's do one thing let's run this once you run this you will get a set of you know description and value you see we have description and we have value the first is the session id it kind of provides you this when we are running in a run time environment right? it provides you a session id we have target column okay which is charges in this case we have the target type of course regression there are other types also in pi caret we have classification we have categorical values to predict or you know classify we have we have anomalies we have forecasting so this is target type is regression in this case we have original data set which is around 1300 rows right and seven columns that we had and the transform data set another data has been transformed right train and test if you see 80% have been you know allocated to train and 20% of them are allocated to test that we will test the model right we will evaluate okay then we have numeric features categorical features right uh, two and three and then we have we have done the pre process which is equal to true we have normalized equal to true so we are you can all read all this and you can tweak this also if you want to train it on gpu we have to provide this as a parameter gpu equal to true it will 
use your GPU uh, machine, right? If you have CUDA or some something installed there, okay? So use GPU equal to false. Now what we are going to do, guys? We are going to now uh, train this model, okay? So how do we train the model? So first we have to uh, find out the best model for us. So we have to compare with several other models, okay? Regression model. So what I'm going to do now? I'm going to do best equal to compare model. So it's it's a function inside it. So you can compare models. It's a function in compare models. What I'm going to do? I'm going. You can sort it. So we have a sort parameter. You can see over here sort. I'm going to sort this equal sort equal to RMSE. Okay. This is how I'm going to sort. Okay. So we're going to use RMSE here. Okay. Let me add an evaluation metric. Now let's uh, run this first, and then we we'll understand. You can see it's initiated. It's also have a uh, status there which says fitting 10 folds estimator lasso regression now you can may, you may ask a question that you know why are we going for rmse let me just uh, show you that okay so you can see it's kind of uh, uh, basically training the model okay first will and then we'll compare it so you can see linear regression lasso regression these different type of regression model then we have elastic net coming in then we'll have uh, gradient boost and also this model will be first evaluated among the cells with pi caret compare model function and then you choose uh, among these models so if you want to go ahead with you know linear regression or you want to go ahead with you know uh, huber regression or any other model you have to then create the model okay then we we'll create model if we pass this model that we have here acronyms ra for ada or knn and then we train the model with help of some if you want to do folds and all we, we can do that also so here we are sorting it with RMSE, root mean square error. And you can see we have got this gradient boosting regression on top GBR, which gives you a RMSE score of around uh, 4700 or something, right? With the lowest RMSE among all other models. Now, it's also giving you some turnaround time that how much time it took, you know, to train it and then evaluation. They said a lot of other evaluation, like we have R square, we have absolute error we have squared error and all okay let me just tell you that what we mean by rmse right so you can see rmse is nothing but it's the it's the we have an uh, actual value and we have the predicted value right the square root of the average of squared okay so we have this let me just you know, excuse me let me make it a little bigger, okay, so what I'm going to do now, yes, so we have here summation and then we have n and then we have i equals to 1, so this is basically your uh, actual value that we have, this is your actual value, this is your actual value and then this is your predicted value that we have, so actual value and predicted values, so this is basically the square root square root of the average of squared error this is what RMSE is so we have this actual values and predicted values and then we have the squared root you can see the squared root of the average of this squared error this is what RMSE is and lower RMSE value means it's better okay for regression okay so you can see that this is what we are doing it over here so if you see, we have this gradient boosting regression as a RMSE of you know 14700, right? And now what we're going to do, guys? Okay, and you can evaluate some other uh, uh, metrics as well. That we can also evaluate it later also. Now what I'm going to do? Now I know that okay, I have to choose this gradient boosting uh, regression. I will just say okay. Now model equals create model. Okay, I will just create the model. So, I'm going to create model, model equals to create model and I'm going to use this estimate, you can see estimator, estimator are nothing but the string which is this, we have this acronym here, right? so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this GBR which is a string and my fold will nothing but the 10 fold, so I want to create the model and then evaluate it on the 10 fold, so as you can see fold, you can see the documentation of this function which says fold int, right, so I'm going to do on the 10 fold and let's now create the model for gradient boosting regression on this data that we have right so you can see the initi initiated we have a status which is fitting 10 folds and now we have got the 
result. So you can see around 4700 uh, of this RMSE, which is the mean of this the entire that we have received here uh, from that. Now what I'm going to do, now let's do one thing. So we can also fine tune it. If you are not satisfied with the model, we can fine tune this model. Okay, so how do we fine tune? Before fine tuning it, now let's evaluate this model. So what I'm going to do, evaluate. So evaluate, a model is again a function there. So we'll use evaluate model and we'll give this model name, which is model. So you can see first we are getting the pipeline. So we have we have the raw data, then we have the imputer, like we have uh, this imputer, you can see, then we have encoding, we are doing it one hot encoding with a categorical classes, and then we are getting this gradient boosting regression, right? So this is uh, one hot encoder for uh, tackling the categorical columns, then we have standard scalar, and then we have gradient boosting. So this is the pipeline, the model pipeline that we have. We have received the plot. We have different, you know, of, how would I put it? We have different parameters, you know, that in, when we train a model, that's called hyperparameter. We are not doing it right now. We'll, we'll, we'll also find, we'll try to fine tune this model with based on some parameter after this. But what we'll, I'm more interested in this feature importance. This is very important. So you can see we have this feature in our column, right? And you can see the most important feature in this entire data set is smoker. Okay, and this is how it works also in real time. So if you are smoking, the tendency is more, so the charges will be more, right? So you can see smoker is the most important feature. Then we have age also. And age and uh, smoker was like also, age and charges are also correlated. Okay, because when you grow older, the charges are more. So you can see smoker, BMI, age, very important to, you know, do this feature importance plot, okay, uh, to find out what are the important feature and how your features are impacting your model, right? So this is one way. Now let's do one thing. You can also look at this, you know, uh, prediction error to find out how uh, best fit the lines are. You can see it's, uh, we have R square, which is around 0 0.88. You know, uh, and we have the, you can see the model prediction are fairly, fairly accurate, okay, the, uh, lines is significantly closer than the ident identity line. Okay, now let's do one thing. What we can do also, we can also do predict model. So we have this predict model function. Now let's pass this model. So you can see it's also predicting the model. Okay, so we have this uh, column like features, age, sex, BMI, children, smoker, region, and charges. And these are all the prediction level and these were the actual level. So we, remember we have this, uh, if you go back to this uh, here, the we have this actual value. So your actual value is this in case, 862 point, you know, 8627. And the prediction level is this, 9198, this prediction level that we have. And we are getting this, if you do the square root of this average of the square error, we will get the RMSE for this particular, you know, this, uh, uh, prediction that we have. So this is the prediction label by our model. So if you see in this case, it's very close, right? We have 43921 as charges and we have 43921, you know, as prediction label, very close. So this is the predict model that we have done. Now what, can, what we can also do, we can also fine tune this model. So how to how do we fine tune this model? Now let me write it here. So fine tuning this, uh, this is a gra gradient boosting regression. We have to select the parameters accordingly. Different regression models have different parameters that you can uh, tune it. So fine tuning this, uh, fine tuning model. So let's first create a params, parameters, and then we'll have, you know, dictionary there. You know, and then here we can define few of the things. Let me just do one thing. So first thing is the learning rate. Okay, how fast or how slow you want to train your model you will say that hey we'll have to say the pi caret class or the function that this is my learning rate so the first is learning rate and i'll have some learning rate which will be a list let's call it you know 0 0.01 0 .0, 0 0.02 and then we have 0 0.05 okay these are my learning rate you can also uh, change it you can tweak this value learning rate and then we have max depth so maximum depth we have around let's keep it to you know one two kind of uh, eight to one two three four five six seven eight here i think it will be a comma because we are in dictionary so maximum depth and now what next we have something called subsample so subsample 
which is again a list 0.4 to 0. Point, let's give some sub sample to breaking down that you know we have this features right the values the rows so 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.7 0. 0.8 excuse me and sub sample is done now what we have is number of estimators is very important uh, parameter when you are uh, fine tuning a regression model uh, n number of estimators and then what we can do Five hundred, six hundred. Let's keep it till six hundred. Okay, so these are my parameters. Now what I will do? I'll use the custom grid. Okay, uh, parameter that we have inside uh, the tune function. Okay, so you see this parameter learning rate zero point zero one to that and max step and sub sample and number of students. I want to fine tune the model on these parameters. Okay, so let me first run this cell. And now I'll use the fine tune uh, function. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call it tuned model, the new variable tuned model. And then here I'm going to do the tune model. So tune model, which is a function, and here I will write the function uh, parameters we'll use. So you can see we have fold, we have you know uh, custom scorer, we have custom grid, and in this custom grid we'll pass our uh, params variable that we have created ever. Then we have again the optimize. So we want to optimize with RMSC, not with you know, R2, you can see it's given as a reference. You can also optimize on that. So tune model. The first thing is the model. So you have to pass the model. So this is the model that we have earlier, right? If you see, model equal to create model. So we have our model pipeline in that model variable. So we are giving this model. And once we have that model, we'll say the optimize. Let's use this optimize. So we want to optimize the RMSE score. We'd like to see if we are getting any improvement there. So optimize and then we have fold again the 10 folds so model optimize rmse fold and then we have custom grid and this is where we are passing our you know variable that we have created ever all our uh, parameters that we have to tune down okay this learning rate max depth sub sample and number of estimators okay so params and then now this this is very important so number of iterations you know you want to do Okay, and that will be suppose if you are giving number uh so it will be number of iteration now suppose if i give 10 iteration okay what this will do this will uh multiply with this fold and this will so what will happen 10 cross 10 it will be 100 times and now it depends on your computational power if you have very limited computational power you can reduce the number but in this case i will just keep it at around you know 20 as number of uh, iteration so we have model, we have optimizing on RMSC score. We have 10 fold, so fold equal to 10. And then we have custom grid params and the number of iteration equal to 20. Now, what we like to do, we like to find out if iterating it for 200 times is equal to multiply with folds and is my RMSC score is improving or not. This is the plan. So let's run this. So it will take little time. You can see it says fitting 10 folds for each of 20 candidates. Okay, and so totaling 200 fits, so it will it will be total of 200 fits. It might take you know up to a minute depending on because we are running it on a CPU on that to one collab. We do not have much computational power, but it takes up to a minute. So let it let it complete. So guys, what we what we can do also we can we can also find out this uh, on insurance charges prediction stimulate application, uh, the notebook and the stimulate application that we are going to also you know develop shortly. You can get all the code on this GitHub repository. Okay, on the AI Anytime GitHub uh, repository, you can get this insurance charges prediction stimulate application. So you can see it's still doing it. It's, it takes up to a minute, I mean more than a minute also. So after this, let me write the code. Okay, so save the model. So we also save the model after this. So we have to create a final model and then we have to save it okay, as an insurance model. And then we'll, you will use that model uh, in an stimulate application. So let me just give you a walkthrough what we did in this video. So we installed it with a hyphen hyphen pre pipe care. It is very important if you want to you know, use this model on Windows or you know, on Ubuntu on the newest Python version like 3.10 or more. We have to you install this version of pipe care, which is 3.0. So we have installed this and now we have 
imported uh, the libraries we have uh, loaded the data insurance from get data function and we did some kind of pre we also find try to find out some correlations we uh, we also did some you know pre-processing you can see we have created this picarent uh, environment uh, where we have the data target column and the train size and the little bit of pre-processing then we compared several models to on the rmse score then we created the model gvr and then we have evaluate model and then model and predicted model here right so as you can see it's still running it takes red time meanwhile let me write the code for saving the model okay that you know how we save the model so let's call it a variable called final model now suppose if the model that i have is the final model okay so how i'm going to do i'm going to use the finalize model function so finalize model so you can see me writing finalize model so finalize model and here i will pass that model uh, variable that i have this is the my final model and i like to save it so save model and same model is a function then let's use this final model variable and just give it a name i'll call it insurance underscore model do not have to give the extension here like we when we use pickle or you know job lib we kind of use the pkl or pkt or this a uh, job lib extensions to save the model pycaret does it for you okay so you do not have to use that extension here so you can see insurance models um, just let me taking little time save the model and then what we'll do so guys you know you can also uh, this link will also be given in description the pycaret documentation very powerful library you know to it's it helps you quickly build and you know evaluate to at the you know in beginning to find out you know, which model will make more sense on your data that we have right if you see it's done and we have got a better rmse score if you see 4600 earlier it was if you see this it was around 4700 so we it has decreased now if you if you also tweak little further if you increase the number of iteration to around 50 or 100 and you can also uh tweak with this parameters that we have for this gradient boosting regression model you see this we have learning rate you can tweak the learning rate or number of estimators you might get a better result okay so what we are going to do let's go ahead with the same model you now you can also save this model and create this uh, fine tuning model you can you can also save this fine tune model but i'm just going to use uh the model that we have created on top because the accuracy has not been increased you know drastically or something that okay we have to Uh, use the fine tune model we can go ahead with the first model that we trained let's save it you can see it says transform uh, transformation pipeline and model successfully saved so again it's you just a pipeline you might have used the scikit learn pipeline to you know create the pipeline and train the model uh, so it's also kind of does the same we have pipeline and you can read out all the steps that inside that pipeline so it has done some imputers right because it has to handle categorical and ordinal uh, ca columns that we have and then we just performed a one hot encoding and some normalization and then use the gradient boosting regression model you can see over here right now if i refresh this i'll get a inference model of pk as i told you that we do not have to give the extension uh, pycaret kind of does it itself so let me just download this so i will download this in uh my desktop i have a folder called insurance stimulate app that we are going to you know build the app there so now let's do one thing let's take this model and try to you know build a simple stimulate application where end user will you know uh input all these features that we have and will then our model will try to predict it uh, the insurance charges okay so let's go back to uh my desktop i have a folder called insurance stimulate app let me open in terminal Let me open VS Code. So meanwhile, I'm opening in VS Code. What I will do? I'll first activate my virtual environment. So I have a VENV, a virtual environment where I have installed these libraries like Streamlit, and uh, then we have uh, PyCaret. So CD VENV, and then we'll go inside bin folder. So CD bin, and then I will do source activate to activate that virtual environment. you can see i am inside that virtual environment in the right hand side we have to do couple of cd dot dot to go to the main directory so cd dot dot let me now uh, go to vs code 
you can see this is my folder and I'm going back to my VS code and here you can see that uh, we have requirements. So in requirement I have streamlit and make sure guys you are installing this version of PyCaret if you want to use this if you want to you know use it you are using it on Windows or Linux machine and if your Python version is more than 3.8 okay or 3.9 you have to use this version of PyCaret okay. Now let's do one thing let's create an app.py so I'll just create an app.py here you can see I'm creating an app.py and now here we will start writing our code okay the app dot uh, that streamlit code so the first thing is we have to do the import so let's import it so I'm going to do import pandas as pd because we need to uh, convert those input dictionary to data frame and we have to pass it as a data frame right so import pandas as pd and then we have import streamlit as ht we are importing the streamlit and then what we have to do, excuse me, from pycaret, pycaret dot regression, we have to import here two things. First is the load model function. We are not in, in, importing now everything like we did in when we were training the model. Like we have set up and all, evaluate, finalize and all those functions. Here we need only two functions, load model and then a predict model. So load and predict, predict model. So these are the imports that we need. Okay. Now what we have to do? We have to create a Streamlit application. So if you are not aware about Streamlit, Streamlit is a Python library which helps you integrate models and now you can build Python applications on web. Okay. So it kind of, you know, for web. Sorry. So it kind of provides you this very minimalistic, you know, way of building web uh, apps in Python. Okay. So. Uh, data scientist or machine learning engineers who have very limited knowledge of web technologies like JavaScript and HTML and CSS, Streamlit is, you know, kind of a very famous there in that uh, community. Okay. Kind of it helps you build applications very faster when we have some models, we can use Streamlit, you know, to visualize it or to integrate that in an UI and, you know, perform the predictions and kind of uh, perform your inferencing on the model that we have. That's that's why we use Streamlit and it's indeed very powerful. And there have been a lot of developments in the Streamlit ecosystem in last one year. Okay, so it was also acquired by some other companies. You know, uh, Streamlit. So you can see from PyCaret dot regression and we have imported Streamlit as well. Now let's do one thing. We have to let's set the page a tab that we have. Let's give it uh, some name. So what we can do. Uh, I'm calling it ht.setPageConfig and you can read uh, more about Streamlit on their documentation. They have a very good documentation as well. Uh, config. I'm giving it a name, uh, the page title and that will be page underscore title and this is going to be my page name. So my page title will be insurance charges prediction. Insurance charges prediction. This is my going to be the page title, that page that will create in Streamlit. set underscore page underscore config. This is done. Now let's load the model. So how do we load? So let's write a function. I'll call it uh, get model. Okay, let's call it get model. And here we'll do one thing. You can see I have this model here, insurance model dot pkl. Right? I'm, I want to use this pickle model, okay, that I have saved. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just re return. I'm going to the return load model that we have imported on top from pycaret.regression uh, module. Uh, return load model and then I'll just call it insurance dot pkl. Insurance dot pkl. So I have loaded my model. Okay, now what? So once we have the model, we have to also uh, predict the model, right? We have to predict basically uh, on top of that, on, on with the help of that model. Okay on top of our data that we'll have. So we'll have an input dictionary or data frame from the end user and we'll use this model to predict what will be my insurance charges, okay. So let's call this predict and you know in this what we're going to do we have two things one will be model the other will be data. So this is going to be that right. So let's have a variable called prediction equal to uh, predict model. We'll use this model dot. We do not uh, model and then data equals to data. We already have model and data equals to data. 
prediction and now let's do one thing return this prediction and then in prediction what we're going to do we are going to return the label if you see this on uh, on the when we would when we evaluated the model or we we have this label right prediction label okay, so this is what we are going to do okay. so label and then we have this the first so, so this is my two functions get model and predict so in predict we are having this model and the data right so this is what we are doing so now what next now now, now we'll write the stimulate uh, code before that let's get this model in the variable and what we can do we do not have to load the model every time uh, we are you know testing or inferencing it you know in the runtime so what i'm going to do i'm going to do st.cache i'm going to use this decorator st.cache which you know that stimulate provides okay and i can also do one thing i can also do allow output mutation equal to true so we can allow output a mutation allow output mutation equals to true so if i am changing the input and again trying to you know in the same runtime trying to predict it should not load the model every time okay so dot cache get model now let's write the stimulate code so how do we write the stimulate code so it says st dot let's first give a title of that so i'm going to call it insurance charges prediction that's it insurance charges prediction this is going to be the title of the page that we have right insurance now now we need some input parameters okay uh, that we have and we have to take some input box or somehow we're going to take the input from end user so we'll use the form so what i'm going to do form equal st dot form and let's okay form st dot form and then charges this is also my this target is also like charges we have form st dot form and we have this feature okay if you come on this stream we have this age sex bmi we have to you know, create this input structure that we have to create with streamlit so end user can interact with the application or they can fill the values of form and then we predict uh, the labels basically the insurance charges so now let's do form the first thing is age for age what we are going to have we are going to have a um, number input because we are going to as has this as a number input so number input form dot number input and here let's give it a label so call it age and then here we'll have two things minimum value and maximum value and then we also have a default value so minimum value should be one <coughs> excuse me and maximum value equals to let's keep it 100 as age and now we have a value also so value equals to 25 this is my default value so age and now what we're going to do we're going to have sex also so sex uh, we can have this a radio button for sex because we only have male and female right so form dot radio and then let's give it a, a label and then here we'll have two things we'll have either male or female so male and female this is what i'm going to have to male and female Let's do one thing. Let's run this code and first see if we are able to get any response from Stimulate. Okay. So what we are doing, what we have done so far, guys, we have imported these libraries. Okay. And then we have uh, created two functions, get model and predict. And we are loading the model in insurance.pkl. And then we have this predict function where we predict with the help of the model and our data, the data frame that we'll have. And we are you know, kind of creating a Stimulate applications. We have a couple of uh, input box so far now let's run this let me do a save how do we run a streamlit application so streamlit run app.py it says no such file or directory insurance pkl dot pkl let me go back ah you can see i have this insurance pkl it should be only insurance model here so model let's see ht dot cash is depreciated please use one of the still new command ht dot cash data or ht dot cash resources okay we'll change make that changes missing submit button so you can see this is this is okay so far so we have this insurance charges prediction and we have this form right you see this form that we have you know charges and that's why we're getting this submit button uh, warning here and we have age uh, which is uh this 
as default and uh, 25 and then you can increase or decrease it and then we have male or female as six now what we're going to do let's uh, write the others so six form dot radio and now we have bmi so bmi equal to form within that form because if you see we have created this variable called form and within that form we are going to take this uh, several inputs from the end user so form bmi let's have this as number input as well and then in this let's give it a bmi we have mean uh, value let's keep it 10 a max value as 50 which is too much for a bmi you know for a healthy person uh, if even for healthy healthy is like around you know uh, between 20 uh, of between I think 12 and 24 or something okay maximum value 50 means it they kind of kind of have you know, surpassed the obesity state okay for a person so and value so let's keep it value as you know what we can keep as value so so for value we can keep it 20 which is a very standard BMI so value and the BMI so we have age we have sex we have BMI so far okay and let me have a children so children here is a variable so form dot slider and these are different way of you know uh, taking the input from the user we have sliders we have number inputs we have radio and also you can do uh, we also have checkbox we have text input so you can read this through in the documentation form dot slider and in form dot slider what we are going to have we are going to give it a label children good and in children that we are going to have mean value equal to 0 and the max value equal to 10 and then we have a value so let's value equal to excuse me value equal to 0 default value so children so we have the slider for children as a data input so form dot slider children mean value max value and value then we have what else we have let me just go back to this we have smoker and region okay let me go back here bmi children and then we have region list so let's call it region list and for the region list what we'll have let's first create a list we have to create a list okay for the region we have so we had south east and what we had we had south we had south east north west let's keep it in the same order the same manner so we have south west south west north west and then we have south east and then we have north east i think these were our uh, let me just confirm it once so if you go to value counts we have south east south west north west north east okay so north west south east and north east okay good so this is the region list that we have okay uh, now what we're going to do guys we have to first let, let's have a drop down so region equals to form dot uh, drop uh, selection we can have this selection and in selection what we're going to have we're going to have region and then region list the variable that we have region list okay. now we have region so we have one uh, feature left which is smoker so for that what we're going to have let's call it if form dot checkbox okay here we can have this checkbox you now for a smoker so for a smoker and what we can do we can do a smoker and we can have this yes and then then else a smoker equal to no so this is for a smoking okay a smoker and no. fine if else so now what we are going to do guys we are going to have this predict button the warning that we got right predict button and in predict button what we like to write form dot form uh, form dot form submit button and here we'll have this predict now we here have to make some changes okay if you see this southwest northwest southeast and northwest let me go back to uh, this you can see these are all lower okay we do not have you know in capital and th this goes for smoking as well okay the smoker so what we can do 
we can uh, when we are you know creating this input dictionary okay let's create this dict that will take the input from end user this will be in dict so first is age age is okay age is same that we have age and then we have sex sex is also okay so sex and then we have so we have sex if you see here we have male and female which is like a caps okay but in the data that we have when we trained okay it was not caps but so what we have to do we can also do lower here okay so it will basically the string that we are taking uh, the value from the end user it will make it lower okay so it will not be in caps we have this caps right m and f right so here it will make it lower and same we will do it for a smoker as well and the region okay so not for a smoker a smoker is good uh, for this region that we have south west where you can see the first letter is capital so we have age we have sex and then we have b uh, bmi so bmi is okay as bmi you can see bmi is uh, fine and then we have children children is also good so here you can see children as it is but we have to make some changes in region list smoker let's keep it smoker smoker and then smoker and then region so region your it will be region dot lower now we do not need this comma region dot lower now what we have to do now we have this input dictionary okay now we have to convert this in an input data a kind of a data frame so let's call it input df and now we are going to use pd dot data frame input dictionary it will be a list inside the pdw data frame function so it will be a list and now we will get this input df okay uh, input df let me just do one thing input df let me go back okay and now here i'm going to write the code guys so now let's do if predict we have this button right so let's if if predict button so if we are hitting this predict button the code should now uh, the model should get utilized so output and then we have this function what was the function name of the model that we have created which is predict so it will be only predict so predict and here we are passing that you know model and this input df that we have you know converted that dictionary to data frame when we are getting the uh, value from the end user so we have output equal to predict model and then input df and then what we are going to do let's have this result in a status message which is st.success streamlit provides several status messages options like warnings info errors success so we'll use success and here we'll write the predicted the predicted uh, charges are excuse me the predicted charges are and it will be in dollar the value because once we have the data and then we have this now let's do one thing not this we have to let's have only till uh two decimal values okay so what we can do to f and then here we have to do the format format and then here we have output this will be this format output now what we can do so let's run this let's run this to see if we are able to you know get the response so what we did in this we let me just see one so we have uh, get model uh, return uh, load model instance models predict and then model get model actually dot title we have this uh, created this feature list uh, input dictionary and then we have converted data frame it's like okay now let's run this selection is not a valid extremely extremely command okay let me go back ah it's not selection it's called select box sorry form dot select box yeah so now you can see we have this let me just remove the cache for now okay dot cash now let's see what it does okay 
we have to use HD dot resources uh, influence charges prediction app now here which is age we have this you are sick BMI children region and the smoker okay now we have to fill this value so let me just show you one of the examples so age so if we keep this age as 32 and this is the first feature and then we have female so we have two classes there male and female uh, in this column then we have BMI now let's if I increase the children to you know you can increase it decrease it you can see you know you can increase it to five with so basically this is a slider okay you can like slide it so let's keep it as two and then the region I'm okay with it so we have four classes in the categories in the region southwest northwest northeast southeast right region and the smoker so you see this this is where we got the prediction level right once on the with once we train the model on colab now we have used the same model that inference model here in the stimulant application and now we have like to predict it so if I am a smoker let's select as a smoker okay so this is basically a selection box like a check box where you are selecting it based on this feature I would like to you know my model to predict uh, the inference charges and we have this stimulant application where we are doing it right so now let's predict you can see the predicted charges are around 24,340 US dollar right, in, in this case so this is how you build like you know a simple application you have a model you want to you not know, test it out uh, and you want to create an UI and you can deploy it you can share that with your you know friends and to anybody like you want to say okay so what we did in this uh, video guys we have used this inference model dot pkl uh, that we used PyCarrot to train it on the insurance health insurance data and we created this stimulate application so you'll find the code here on the github repository you can also extend it okay and let me know your uh, thoughts or if you have any feedback on this particular video okay if you are facing any challenges you know creating or running this program you can just uh, comment that in the comment box and uh, I'll be happy to help okay and you can also uh, do a pull request if you want to you know uh, make some changes if you want to improve uh, uh, this model further okay you can also do it from here so this is what we have uh, for today guys in this video if you if you are liking the content uh, please like this video and please subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed yet and please share this video and channel with your friends and peers thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video